In this video, we'll do a silly face swap project. It's actually easier to do than you might think. Let's get started. So this is the picture that we'll work with. We have a model that's facing the camera straight on. And the lighting on our model is very soft. There aren't any hard shadows to worry about. The face image that I've chosen to use is this one. Similar to our other image, we have nice soft lighting on our subject without any harsh shadows. And the model is facing toward the camera. I'll copy this by pressing Command or Control C. Then I'll go back to our original document and press Command or Control V to paste it in. Now I'm going to grab my Move tool and I'm just going to move this so all of the edges of this image are inside of our document. So the first thing that I want to do with this image is to remove everything except for the face. So to do that, I'm going to add a mask. Then I'm going to select the mask layer, and then I'm going to grab the paintbrush tool. Now using the paintbrush tool, I can paint in black on our mask to hide the areas that I don't want. So I'm just going to increase the size of my paintbrush by using the bracket keys. And then I can go ahead and paint in black to remove everything except for the face. To make sure that I've removed everything from the mask, I'm going to hold down Alt or Option on my keyboard, and then I'm going to click on this mask layer icon. So you can see that we've missed a few areas, so I'll go ahead and paint in black on those areas to make sure that they're completely removed. To return to our normal view, I'll just select any layer. Great, so now that we have that all ready to go, let's position this face layer so that it's sitting in a good spot on top of our original model. To do that, I'm going to lower the opacity of this layer so that I can see the model underneath. Then I'll grab the Move tool, and I'm going to go ahead and increase the size, and rotate it, and what I'm really looking for is I want the eyes to line up. Once the eyes are lined up, I'm just going to make this a little bit larger. And I can see that the eyes and the nose are matched up, and so is the mouth. So I think that that's a pretty good place for our face. So I'm going to increase the opacity. And now to make this blend in better, I'm going to select the mask one more time. And using the paintbrush tool, I'm just going to erase areas that don't belong. So right here, we have hair that should be covering the face. So using my paintbrush, I'll go ahead and erase so that that hair is revealed. And I'm also going to lower the flow of my paintbrush. What this does is it allows you to gradually paint away areas. So up here on the forehead, I can gradually paint away some of that to soften it. Down here by the chin, I'm going to make my paintbrush nice and small. And I'm going to paint in white to create a nice harsh line for the chin. Then I can switch my paint color back to black and just clean up the edges so they look nice and sharp. If you ever paint away too much, you can paint in white to reveal this face again. So this blending process sometimes takes a while, but just take your time with it and try painting in white and black to make this face look nice and blended in. As you go through this process, 
just remember that painting in white will reveal the new face, and painting in black will remove the new face. So now that our face is positioned properly, it's time for our next step, fixing the lighting and colors. Let's start with the lighting. You can see that our new face is definitely much brighter than the original face. So to fix this, I'll go to my adjustments. And first, let's add a levels adjustment. I'll drag this down and to the right of our new face so that this only affects the new face layer. So since this face is too bright, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the output white level. This makes the white areas a bit darker. You can see that that kind of just grays out those areas. I'm going to bring this to around 85%. To make this even darker, I'm going to darken the shadows by bringing the black level over. I'm going to bring this to around 26%. You can see we have nice dark shadows now. So here's the before and after. You can see this transition from the forehead to the new face looks much better. Next, we need to fix up the colors. I'm going to start by reducing the saturation. I can see a lot of redness around the nose that isn't really present on the rest of the body. So I'll go to my adjustments and then I'll apply an HSL adjustment. With this set as a child layer, I'm going to lower the saturation slider. I'll bring this to negative six. Okay, and now to subtly change the colors a bit more, I'm going to add a curves adjustment. So the curves adjustment helps to make the colors look a little bit more like the original skin color. I'm going to go to our individual color channels so that I can add and take away colors to make this skin match better. So first I'll go to the red channel. I'm going to select the picker. Then I'm going to click and drag directly on the face to add or take away colors. So I'll start by adding a bit of red. Then I'll go to the green channel, and I'm going to add a bit of green. You can see that that has drastically improved the matching of these colors. Here's the before and after. Before and after. And as one final step, I'm going to go to the blue channel, and I'm going to take away some of the blue. You can see that that skin matches a lot better than before. Before it looked a bit more magenta, but now it has the same yellow tones that our original skin has. So this is looking really good so far. As our next step, we're going to fix up the skin texture and then just fix up some small details here and there. Let's start by fixing up the left side of the face. I don't know if you've noticed, but we have a bit of a strange transition area right here. There seems to be a bit of a line. To fix this, I'm going to add a new pixel layer. I'm going to click and drag this on top of our background layer here. And then using this layer, I'm going to use the clone brush tool to fix up that area and transition it better. So I'll grab the clone brush. Then I'm going to change the setting up here from current layer to current layer and below. I'm working with a clone brush that has a slightly lower flow. To use this, I'm going to hold down Alt or Option and then sample an area of smooth skin over here. Then I'm just going to paint over this area. 
I think that area looks a lot smoother, but I accidentally painted outside of that area, so I'll grab the eraser tool, and I'm just going to erase right outside of the face where I painted too much. So now you can see the before and after of smoothing out that side of her face. The next thing I want to fix is I want to reduce the texturing here on the forehead. The original image had a lot more skin texture, and our new image just doesn't have that. So I'm going to remove some of this texture now. I'll start by adding a new pixel layer to paint on. Then I'm going to grab our paintbrush tool, and I'm going to use the color picker to sample a nice light area of the forehead. I'll apply that to our paintbrush. And now, using a larger brush, I'm just going to paint directly on top of the forehead. So you can see that by painting directly on top of the forehead, we now have no skin texture. To make this less obvious, I'm going to lower the opacity of this layer. I think around 56% looks pretty good. You can see what it looked like before, and here's the after with blurring up some of that skin texture. Our last step for cleaning up this face is removing some blemishes that we have here. I'll use a new pixel layer to do this, and then I'm going to grab the In Painting Brush tool. I'll set this brush to Current Layer and Below. Then I can directly paint on top of this layer to remove any imperfections that we have. There's just a few distracting areas here and there, and by painting over them, we can reduce those distractions to make this look a lot better. Alright, that was pretty simple. To finish this off, I want to add some lighting to specific areas. I'm going to start by adding some shadows. To do this, I'll go to my adjustments. Then I'm going to add a curves adjustment. I'm going to bring the spline down. Then to invert this layer, I'll press Command or Control I. So now this dark curve is being applied to nothing. I'll grab my paintbrush. And then we can paint in white to reveal this adjustment on specific areas of the face. So I'll select white. And now using a nice low flow paintbrush, I'm going to add a bit of shadowing. In our original image, you can see that we have some darkness on this side of the face. So I want to duplicate that on this new layer. So with a nice large brush, I'm just going to paint some of that darkness on the right side. Here's the before and after of that. Next, I'm just going to darken a few key areas. I'll start by darkening up the eyebrows and darkening a little bit around the eyes. I'm also going to take a larger brush, and then I'm going to decrease the flow and just add a bit of darkness here on the forehead. Here's the before and after of that darkening. Very nice! I think this is looking really good so far. I just want to add a quick levels adjustment to the entire image. So let's add that levels adjustment. Then I'm going to bring the black level over to darken up the shadows. And I'm going to bring the white level over to brighten up the highlights. And with that levels adjustment completed, you can see how this just adds a bit of contrast to the overall image. And with that, we are done. Here's the before and the after. 
If you want to do more composites like this, then you can check out my compositing course in the video description. In the course, we learn everything you need to know to combine different images together. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.